I'm going to put this onto this. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how I designed this user interface for a controller for my automatic injection molding machine. This is a machine that was built, I'm not sure when, 1980s, maybe before that. And I'm trying to bring it into this century with an electronic controller. So at the end of the episode, I will get to here, where I have a display that you can interact with a little bit, but it's not really doing anything real because it's just the display and it's not connected to a microcontroller. Before I get into how I designed this interface, I want to give you an idea of what I was thinking when I designed it. So the first thing I did is I came up with a list of features I thought were important. So this represents what you would see in a PID controller that's used to control the heater on the machine. And there's a set point variable and a process variable which represents the current temperature as measured by the thermocouple attached to the heater. So I wanted to be able to have a place where I could set it and then show the current temperature. This is, the idea here is that I can just tap on this and change these two numbers between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And that way, you know, sometimes I have data sheets that are in Celsius, sometimes I have data sheets that are in Fahrenheit. That way I can just use whatever is native. This is my thinking about how you would increase and decrease the temperature that you're asking for in the set value. That's one way. I'm also thinking that if you click on this, I might have a numeric keypad that allows you to type in that number, which would certainly be faster than using these buttons here. These are to control the machine for semi-automatic mode. So the idea is that you can uh, click run. And if this is currently depressed, what that means is it's automatic. So it'll just keep running, creating new parts until you click the stop button. To make that work, I'm going to need to have a part fall sensor to make sure that the part comes out of the mold before I continue to the next cycle. Moving along, uh, this will. the idea here is that this is a counter of how many parts you've made so far. I'll probably set it up so you tap it or double tap it to clear this so that when you put in a new mold, you can reset the parts counter. This is going to be an estimate of roughly how many parts per hour you're making, which is, you know, a nice thing to know. And then I have some other controls here that are used to control the cycle. So this is uh, how many seconds to pause after the start of injection before retracting the RAM. This is the cooling time. So after it retracts the RAM, how long do we wait until we open the mold? And then the idea here is that uh, while it's opening the mold, it would say ejecting, and then while it's waiting for the part to drop, it would show waiting. So my thinking is that this LED here will kind of light up and move along from one section to another. What you're seeing here, by the way, with the different looks of these LEDs is just me experimenting with uh, different appearances. And then finally, this is to go to a settings page. I'm sure I'll make changes to this experience as I start to implement the actual code, but this is a really good starting point. So now let me show you how I built this. When I decided I wanted to design this screen for the injection molding machine controller, I tried several different approaches. The first thing I tried is to use different photo editors. And that got to be fairly tedious because it was hard to change the size of fonts and various other things. So I eventually switched to Microsoft PowerPoint. And the nice thing about PowerPoint is that all of these things are different elements. And I can change the front to back order. I can change the size of text. I can change the actual text. This has a rectangle with some texture on it. So I can do a lot of things to experiment with a design. And then once I'm happy with it, then the next step was to create the second version where I have different states for the different parts of the screen. If you look here, there are different cases where I want to have different appearances for different parts of the screen. So one is for the LED. So here's the off LED and here's the on LED. These are actually photographs and I'll show you how I pull those out of the photographs in a minute. The other thing though is I wanted to make these buttons 3D buttons. 
So if we go here and take a look at this, and we look at the shapes, the way that I did that is to use the 3D bevel here. And so you can see I have it set to this. If we go to over here, uh, this is where I have it depressed. And so I was able to use the same feature, but to use a different version of the button. So here's what I had before, which is the up position. And then here is what I chose for the in position. So the idea is that the actual screens, and I ended up with these screens, have the text missing because I'm going to be adding that with individual text controls in the UX. And then I have these two screens here. All of the LEDs are on, and then all of the buttons are not depressed. And then the second version of the screen, all of the buttons are depressed, and all of the LEDs are off. And then the other thing I changed is this is degrees Fahrenheit and this is degrees Celsius. So these are the only two bitmaps that I need to be able to define the experience that you see on the screen. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. The next piece of the workflow is to take one of these screens. Oh, before I do that, um, one of the things that I did is I set a custom size. I wanted to have the aspect ratio be correct. And so the target screen that I'm using is 800 pixels by 480 pixels. So this aspect ratio here corresponds to that ratio. And what that means is when I export this as a bitmap by doing file save as, and then selecting a PNG, I can save it as one of these pages here. I've already done that for a new version of page one. So let me go back to here and do that for a new version of page two. So I'll go ahead and say file, save as. I want it to be a PNG file. And then I'll click on more options and then select on the second one. And then I'll change the name here so that it has a B in the extension. And then I just want to save the one page, the one slide into that file. The way I have it defined right now, these are actually coming out as very large files. So for that, I use um, this program paint.net. And then I can open the files. And so if I open uh, this one, page 1b, its size comes in very large. If I look here and I say resize, you can see it's coming in at uh, 6,000 6,500 by almost 4,000 pixels. So I want to change that to 800. And you'll notice that this came out to 480. That's the exact pixel size that I want. And so now I can save this. And this is ready for me to import into the Textion editor. I've already spent quite a bit of time in the Nextion editor creating this uh, user experience that you see here. And you can see that there are different controls, like this one right here is the text control. This is the background image, and these are the two background images right here. This is using the previous version of the LED buttons that I had, and I want to change this to the new versions that I just exported. So I'll go here and I'll say replace, and then I can use page 1b. And then for this one, I can replace it and using page 2b. Oops, which I forgot to change to the correct size. So I got an error message for that. So I'll go ahead and do that to be. Okay, then if I go back to the next Dion editor and then change the second one, I can now select to be and it correctly imported it. So what will happen is now if I debug this, you will see that it is coming up with these in different states. I don't have any code right now that will change them from on to off for the LEDs, but at least you can see that it did pick up the, the new LEDs. Now, I also mentioned that I used photographs for the actual LED images. Here's a photograph with it turned off. 
And then this is a photograph with it turned on. And you can see that I had to cut the brightness of the camera way down to be able to take this photograph. And so to grab it, I just zoomed in and then I created a circular selection. And initially it wasn't circular. You can see down here it's 42 by 40. So I can just increase the size here and then I can move this around until it's exactly what I want to capture. And then I just said, you know, copy, like so. And then I went to PowerPoint, and then I pasted it into this page here. And I got these two images here. These two images were too large, so I took the original images that I had that were just circles with some gradient on them. I could look over here and tell that it was this size here. So I'll show you how I did that. So let me just grab this. I'll go over to here, I'll grab that height, and then I'll go over to here, and I'll paste that height into it. And you can see that's how I got the LED at the correct size, so that it would show up correctly in these two pages here. So going back to the next Dion editor, the other thing that I mentioned is I have these controls all over the place here. Now these controls are button controls, but they have a cool feature here, which is you can say that I want to use picture zero when the button is up and picture two when the button is down. Now, these are values that you can enter. And what I'm doing is I'm using these IDs here. So this has an ID of zero and this one has an ID of one. And so what I'm saying is when the button is in the up position, I want to use the background image that has the ID zero. And then I want to have this be a button that is cropped. And I also cleared the text. Doing those things gives me a transparent button where when I click it, I'll show you this here. So when I run it and then I click it, you can see it changes between bitmap zero, ID zero, which has it in the up state, and then bitmap one, which it has it in the down state. And that's how I'm gonna do all of these other things like changing between Fahrenheit and centigrade, etc. All of these are set up right now so that they're working because I set them up the same way. I did set this one so that when I click it, it toggles between two different states. So these are different options that I'm going to have to play around with once I hook this up to an actual microcontroller so that the two are communicating and the microcontroller is having more control over what you see on the screen. I was debating whether I wanted to use a five inch diagonal screen or a seven inch diagonal screen. So I pulled these two images into Microsoft Word and then I set the sizes of these based on the calculation I did for what the diagonal of five inches would equate in terms of the, X, the width and the height. And I did that for both the five inches and seven inches. So I printed this out and then just kind of felt what it would be like using my fingers. And then I also imagined using fingers with gloves on to protect against the, the hot molds if I'm doing a long run. And decided that seven inches was really nice. Five inches probably would have worked, but it's not that much more to buy a seven inch display. So I ordered a seven inch display. And uh, here's the display. I need to uh, hook it up. There's a connector back here. I just need to add some power. And then what I'm going to do is export the program from the Nextion editor to a micro SD card that will go in here. Back in the Nextion editor, I need to create a TFT output file. I've already set the location so I can just say output and it compiles it. And then it creates a TFT file. I'll copy this onto the micro SD card and then put it in the board. This is what uh, the program looks like that comes with it. And I haven't taken the prote protective screen off yet. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And uh, it does make it a little bit easier to read. Next thing I'm going to do is unplug this. Unplug the power so that I can flip it over, try to keep the uh, power cord out of the way. And then I've got my micro SD card 
that I will put into the, the back, into here. Now what is supposed to happen is when I push put the power back in, it should load the program. And as you can see there, it's, it's loading the program. It's copying it from the SD card. Okay, now that it's finished copying, the instructions say I just remove the SD card and then power it back up again. Aha! Look at that! See, you can see that toggles. And if I push and release, that works. It's a little hard to see those, but if I tap this one, it should change between Fahrenheit and centigrade, which it does. So there we go. Next step after this is to start writing the code for the microcontroller to actually bring this to life. So recently, a couple of other YouTubers have mentioned how long it takes them to edit videos. I actually did something recently. I upgraded from DaVinci Resolve 15, which is what I have been using, to DaVinci Resolve 17. And then I learned about something called the Speed Editor, which is this little keyboard and jog wheel, etc. So I purchased this, and what I didn't realize is that it also came with the license for DaVinci Resolve Studio. I didn't realize how much nicer that was until I started rendering videos, and it went from about one minute rendering time per minute of video to about 10 times that speed. So it's now a lot faster to render the videos, which means if I make a mistake, and I do sometimes, I can re-render the video fairly quickly. The other thing is it makes it a lot more fun to edit the videos. Uh, so I was thinking it would make it faster, but it turns out I'm spending more time on the videos. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. As you can see here, this screen looks a lot like that screen, which was the whole idea. And it means that uh, without writing any code at all, so far I have a very pleasant user experience and I'm pretty excited about how this is going to turn out in terms of its ability to control the injection molding machine and the things that I can do to revise the, the user experience or the UI. Uh, without a lot of work, without having to change a lot of code. So that means the code that I write can be focused just on what's required to control the injection molding machine. So please uh, help me grow my channel, uh, subscribe, comment below, give me a thumbs up, and if you want to be notified when I have new videos like this one, uh, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.